and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Every day we stand in an epic spiritual battle between good and evil, and safety is of the Lord. This is Truth Dealer Radio. Warning believers to wake up and be sober. Encouraging believers to stand on the Word of God. And motivating believers to be truth dealers with a bold witness for Jesus Christ in these end times. And now the host of Truth Dealer Radio, Brian Moonen. It's true. Praise God. Welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio, where no matter what time zone you're in, it's truth o'clock. Of course, the truth is God's word. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12. I am Brian Moon, and welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio. Sounding the alarm, asking you to wake up and join the battle for truth. Today on Truth Dealer Radio, we do have a sober warning to sound about a very popular teacher, John MacArthur. John MacArthur is a Reformed Calvinist. I'm not really sure what other denomination he identifies with. And sadly, John MacArthur has some very serious problems in the doctrine that he teaches. He teaches that you can take the mark of the beast and then still be saved. I'm going to show you from the Bible why that's a lie. And I'm going to warn you, do not take the mark of the beast. Now I'll start off by playing a clip of John MacArthur answering a man's question. He asked, if you take the mark of the beast, can you still be saved? Was in regard to the latter half of the tribulation period when, when men would be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. My question is, uh, once a person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes. Uh, now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes, otherwise there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation. And you've got to have the salvation of folks in the end of the tribulation. You're going to have the Jews redeemed. You're going to have, according to Revelation chapter 7, an innumerable number of Gentiles redeemed. So many they can't even be counted across the face of the earth. So I don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to it, to permanency. Any more than you being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life. Well, especially when the 144,000 don't start their ministry till the second half. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That make it a little tough. Yeah. Well, it's hard for me to know where to begin with this. Some of you may be thinking, Brian Moonen thinks he's smarter than John MacArthur? I certainly don't. I consider myself less than everyone else. John MacArthur is a very intelligent man. He is a man who studies the Bible. But I have to tell you, this is rank heresy. I believe it stems from not only the Calvinism, but the dogmatic viewpoint of pre-tribulational rapture, the timing of the rapture, which I believe is unbiblical after studying it myself for the past five years. And I'm going to show you in the Bible why I'm saying that. Revelation 13, verse 15 through 18. And he had power... This is speaking of the false prophet and the Antichrist. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. First of all, John MacArthur rationalizes. His reasoning is foolish because he's rationalizing, saying, well, the 144,000 are 
don't start their ministry till the middle of the tribulation. Well, that is when the mark of the beast is administered. It's after the abomination of desolation takes place in the holy place in Jerusalem that the prophet Daniel warned about and that Jesus Christ warned about. And by the way, the 144,000 Jews from 12,000 from each tribe, their male virgins, they are sealed by God himself in their forehead with the name of the Father. They are sealed by the Holy Spirit. They are sealed so that they won't be able to be killed for not taking the mark of the beast. They're protected. They have a mission to perform, and God sees to it that they're protected. Now, the other saints that are in the world that are talked about all throughout Revelation, the saints, those are saved people, they are killed for their faith. They are killed because they do not take the mark. It doesn't mean people won't be getting saved. It means if you do get saved, you're not taking the mark. And so you may be martyred. It also doesn't mean that the Antichrist is going to catch every single person in the whole earth. He's going to try. He's going to make war. He's going to overcome the saints. It talks about in Revelation. Those are saved brothers and sisters in Christ. People, read your Bible. Believe what it says. And step away from this Hollywood modern doctrine of pre-tribulation rapture that says, we don't need to go through any suffering. Why would we go through? Did you know that God protected Israel? When he, the same time he was pouring out the plagues on Egypt, Israel was safe. They had light in their tents, in their homes. It was complete darkness in, in Egypt. They didn't have any lice. They didn't have any frogs. They didn't have any of these plagues. They were protected. Moses walked through the city when the fiery brimstone was coming down, killing cattle. They're not easy to kill, by the way, you know, and men and women and things were being burned and it was coming down and he walked through the city. God protected him. And then he got to the outside of the city and he prayed and asked God to make it stop. And the Lord brought it to a stop. Exodus 9, 24. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and brake every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And down to verse 28, Pharaoh says, Entreat the Lord, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. And verse 33, And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord, and the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. These are examples of God's elect, God's people being protected when at the same time God is pouring out his wrath on the wicked, which happens right now today, by the way, in, in some form or another. People are being judged everywhere you look. Don't tell me that God can't protect his people anywhere, anytime, whether he's dealing with the nation of Israel or not. He's God. He is the Lord God. He is omniscient. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful and he will do as he wants, when he wants, how he wants. You need to trust in the Lord. Would you look at the history of the church? Martyrdom everywhere. From the, from the Lord on, look at Stephen. You know, why are we any better? We're not any better than our Lord. You may have to suffer for your faith. If you don't want to, you're not worthy to follow the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered for you. Now, I'm not saying you need to earn your salvation, but that's a fact. Jesus said, if you're not willing to pick up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy to be my disciple. 
And it boils down to it, where the rubber meets the road. So I think a lot of American Christians need to snap out of their dream world and get into the scriptures and see what it really says. And what it says is that those who take the mark of the beast are worshiping Satan and they will not be redeemed. They will be suffering in the lake of fire. Let's look at Matthew 24, verse 14 through 15. And a lot of people say, well, that's for the Jews. Where did you learn that? Where did you learn that one or two passages out of Matthew is for the Jews or the whole thing is for the Jews? It's for the Jews. Why are you reading it to begin with? I tell you what, it's God's word. And you better pay attention to what Jesus Christ told his followers. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down. Okay, let me pause here for a second. This is where they say, see, he's talking to the Jews, talking about Judea. Well, hello, the prophecy that he's talking about being fulfilled takes place in Jerusalem. So yeah, it means if you're nearby, it's going to be worse for you. So you need to flee. You need to get out quick because it's going down. The man is revealing himself. He's going to start persecuting the church like crazy, like wildfire. And yeah, you better get out of town. Now's your chance to run. Flee to the mountains. Doesn't mean (laughs) his warning is only for those that are in this area. This is a time that's coming upon the whole world. Jesus said, unlike any other time, but it's acute. It's pinpointed to Jerusalem. It's right in this area. It's happening now. He's saying, if you're in this area, you need to get out. You need to run. Don't look back like Lot's wife. Just get out of there quick. I'll provide for you. Don't worry about grabbing all your stuff. Just get out because it's going down now. And it's going to be very, very hard on God's people. And Jesus Christ knows that. That's why he's answering their question. He's answering their question honestly. We need to read it and be honest. What does it say? It says the same thing in Luke 21 and Mark chapter 13. It's not only in Matthew. So study the scriptures to show thyself approved unto God and be honest with yourself about what it says. This is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't take it lightly. Don't just scuff it off and listen to a man's interpretation of it. Get alone with the Lord in prayer and read this. It's very important. This time is coming upon us. Every passing day, we're closer to this time. And those of you out there, men that have families and kids, this time should not overtake you as a thief in the night. We're the ones who are supposed to know the season. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. That's why it says to watch and be sober. Don't listen to John MacArthur, who says you can take the mark of the beast and la di da and then get, you know. That's a satanic lie. Now, 2 Thessalonians This is by no means going to be an exclusive study of end times, eschatology, and things. I just want to hit these verses because these are some main verses. If you never heard this, I hope you'll read them. I have nothing to be afraid of. I want to to bring you the Bible. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, chapter 1 is all about the second coming. In verse 6 through 12 especially. Now chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Everyone agrees that's talking about what we call the rapture. Okay, the disagreement is about the timing. Okay, so listen to what Paul says. By inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this is a prophecy. This is is how it's going to happen. Now we beseech you, brethren, By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. 
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Okay, right there. He, he laid it out. He says, you know, why are you worrying that you missed this event? I told you all about how it's going to happen. The Antichrist has to be revealed first. It's going to be a great falling away, a time of apostasy, and then the Antichrist is going to be revealed. That's what he's telling them. There's no other way to read this. This will happen before the day of the Lord. Period. And this is the church age. This is this is not some coded message for some body of Jews or something that, you know, these dispensationalists want to interpret it. These are saved people that he's writing to. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, and I kind of wonder, are these people taking the mark of the beast? Because we're going to see in other verses in Revelation, it says that they are damned. Revelation chapter 13. This is talking about the Antichrist. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Okay, those are saved people. I'm not trying to be sarcastic to point that out. I'm, I'm just saying those are saved people, saints. They're not diet saints that come on in the tribulation period, and they're different. By the way, if you believe the rapture happens first, and then there's other people saved later. Who are they? Are they part of the body of Christ? Because there's one resurrection of the saints. And we're told the timing of it is supposed to have the way it is going to take place in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air with, with Jesus Christ. We our second, the dead will rise first. There's only one resurrection in the fruit in the future. There's only one resurrection of the saints. In the last day, Jesus said, I will raise him up in the last day. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse thirteen through eighteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Okay, he's talking about Christians that have passed away and died. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, and this is also what it's talking about. This event is also what it's talking about in chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 8, In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. That is the same event. That is what it's talking about. The last day, the day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, 
and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Praise God. Praise God. We will be raptured. We will be with the Lord. And that's the timing of it. The dead in Christ shall rise first. This is what Martha believed in. In John chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. That's what they believed in, and that's what we believe in. One future resurrection of the dead in Christ. All the saints who have gone before, who are asleep. This is called the first resurrection in Revelation chapter 20, verse 5. The only other resurrection is for the damned, when they will be raised for judgment. That is, that is called the second death. And God's word in Revelation 20, verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Praise God. Now I just want to focus back on what John MacArthur said. He said that, yes, people can take the mark of the beast, which is equivalent with worshiping Satan, worshiping the Antichrist, and then they can later turn around and be saved. The Bible does not teach that. That makes that wrong. This is what the Bible says. Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And by the way, that's not a burning desire to be with God, like Billy Graham said. You fail, Billy. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay. Praise God. And okay, so just, just look at this verse. Break it down. They did not worship the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. That means that they had a chance to. Somebody wanted them to. That means they were on the earth. They're saved and they were there and somebody wanted them to take the mark of the beast and they didn't do it. So guess what happened? They lost their physical life. whoop de doo They didn't care. They counted it all as dung for the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew that the glory ahead in heaven with the Lord was worth more than the stupid earthly possessions and their fleeting life on earth. They endured to the end by the grace of God. That's who these people are. They're saved people. This guy is going to be a killing machine. He's going to go around and hunt down Christians. Okay? The Christians that are here. Because there are a lot of Christians in the world at that point. He's going to go on a mission finding them and killing them when they don't take the mark of the beast. So John MacArthur is a heretic. He's apostate. I don't know what's wrong with the man. I don't know why he can't see this. I know, like I said in the beginning, he's an intelligent man. But I don't come on here to warn about him because I think I'm better or smarter than him intellectually. I just know by the faith of God what the word of Jesus Christ says, what the word of the Lord says, what the word of God says in the Holy Bible, which is not corrupt. And it says, if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to burn in hell forever. And that's what we're going to read after we come back. We'll be right back on Truth Dealer Radio. If you have any questions about today's program, please write to Brian at KJVPrepper.com. Visit KJVPrepper.com for Christian apparel worn to warm. Welcome back to Truth Dealer Radio. I also want to remind you that we are still having a sale at KJVPrepper.com. If you use the promo code RADIO, 
you will receive 20% off. And I would really appreciate your business and your support. Let's get the word out about the love of Jesus Christ. Wake up and join the battle for truth. Now back to this Bible study. We need to go back to Revelation chapter 14 and read what is the destiny of every person who takes the mark of the beast. I hope John McCurser will read this. Revelation chapter 14 verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. <sighs> it does not sound like a hopeful scenario. Can I get an amen on that? That is the ultimate judgment. And these guys chuckle about it. Brandon House, Jimmy D. Young, and John MacArthur, and others, I'm sure. If you know anyone else who teaches this heresy, please write to me, brian at truthdealer-radio.com. These guys chuckle about it, and they say, well, it's not the unpardonable sin. It doesn't sound very pardonable to me. Did you ever consider that it's up to God what he forgives and what he doesn't? Maybe you don't have it all figured out, but this is a pretty clear warning here in the Word of God. It's not very vague. <laughs> what we just read, it's not vague at all. It sounds like eternal damnation, like total doom, whosoever. Just like it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. This would be kind of like the opposite of that, whosoever. This is like whosoever takes the mark is going to hell. It's very clear cut. There is no rationalizing this. Unless you want a different Bible version and you tone it down and you overthink in your intellectual mind and you think, well, there has to be, because I believe in the pre tribulation rapture, there has to be people around. There has to be Christians around. They can't be the regular Christians like us because we're the Christians who won't suffer and we're going to go up and nothing's going to happen to us, especially here in America. So it has to be some other lowly Christians. They can be beheaded. But I have my doctorate degree, and I'll be out of here. Well, you know what? That sickens me. That's not faith in the living God. That's a man-made system, Schofield, study notes, blah, 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 modern doctrine that nobody believed in back in the day. Yeah, tell it to the saints in the Fox's Book of Martyrs, or the Martyr's Mirror. It's not a historical view of the second coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a day of judgment for the wicked, and it is a day of redemption for his saints. We look forward to that day with fervent prayer, and we await for the Lord to return for his church, for his bride. And it's not going to be in 17 sections. He's not going to come get his feet and his hands and his hair and his shoulder and then come back and get his uh, other parts later on. Not the way it's written in the Bible. Now, this verse continues on with a contrast. It just told about who took the mark of the beast and goes to hell. Listen to what it says after that. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Praise God. These are the ones, they're not going to take the mark of the beast. They're going to endure to the end by the grace of God and they're going to lose their lives unto the death. They're not going to count their life. They're going to go and be with the Lord. 
and praise God for the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ that's unmeasurable. Another thought about John MacArthur's view of, you know, that there must be people getting saved during the tribulation. Okay, that's fine. That's the other thing. I mean, nobody said they can't. And if you get saved, you're not going to take the mark of the beast. So you're going to be martyred unless some do get through. Like Jesus said, for the elect's sake, I will shorten this time. Otherwise, there's going to be no flesh that remains on the earth. Matthew 24, 22, he says that. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's his plan, that there will be some flesh to go into the kingdom. Okay? But in Mark chapter 13, verse 19 through 20, Jesus said this, For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. So that right there says that God knows there are going to be saved people here on the earth during this time. And guess what? The Antichrist is going to be making war against the saints of God. And he's going to be overcoming some of them. And they are the elect. Those are the chosen people who are saved. Maybe there's other people hearing about what's going on and they get saved. Then there's other people that are being deceived. They, they receive not the knowledge of God. They reject God and they believe a lie and they take the mark of the beast and they're damned. See, it, it may not be five different delusions. People always talk about the strong delusion. Well, if they reject God, God doesn't have to strive with them. If he takes his hands off them, they get what they want. They say, no, 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 I don't want God. I'm going with the Antichrist. Okay, you go for it. You see how that works out for you. The strong delusion. They will be deceived. They will be damned. They will not be saved. They're reprobate. It says it over and over again. Now, I don't know if we can be dogmatic about the fact that the strong delusion spoken of in 2 Thessalonians is the same thing as people taking the mark, but Revelation also says they were deceived. They were deceived. They believed a lie. That's what being deceived is. You believed a lie, and then we know they're damned. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. You could say, hey, you know, it could be the same situation. No reason to be dogmatic. The point is, if you take the mark of the beast, you will not be saved. You will burn in hell forever, it says. Whosoever takes that mark of the beast will burn in hell. And John MacArthur, his so-called wisdom is made foolishness by the word of God because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12. God is not vague about all these things. These are clear warnings. You couldn't get a much clearer warning than anything in the Bible that, that don't take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist. He's the substitute. He's the devil's version of the Messiah. And you're worshiping Satan if you take that mark. And this is going to be at a time when the Lord is about to return. And it's a very serious, sober time. It's nothing to chuckle about. And these days we're living in right now, it's nothing to chuckle about. People are dying and going to hell right now. You need to be warned. Don't do it. Don't take the mark of the beast. Don't listen to these false prophets. And I don't care if he's right about a hundred other things. He's wrong about this. And this is very, very serious. He's also wrong about the blood of Christ not being effectual. John MacArthur says, quote, You have to stop short of saying we are saved by the blood of Jesus. But Ephesians 2.13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ, John. I think John MacArthur has a issue with pride. And if he doesn't quite understand something intellectually, he makes up a reason for it. 
he writes his own little version of it. That's sad because that's not of faith. Anything that is not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. It's sinful to correct the Bible. It's sinful to tell people that they can take the mark of the beast and go to heaven. It's sinful and it's wicked. Saying, I, do, I don't think the fact that someone takes that mark of the beast is a sentence of permanency. Well, it's such a fancy way of saying, you can take the mark of the beast and you can get saved. He said yes to the guy. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That poor guy. People maybe think they're saved now that aren't. We'll go ahead and take that mark and think, I remember my good old smart teacher with the striped tie and the fancy program on the radio. He told me I could do it. It's not the unpardonable sin. How, how can you sit around and make up these terms, you know? Oh, that's not the unpardonable sin. Are you God? To me, if it says in here, there's one thing that you do and you go to hell no matter what, that sounds unpardonable to me. So that's my warning. Watch out for these teachers that come up with their own private interpretations and they twist the word of God and they tell you, you can worship Satan and go to heaven. I don't care who they are. I don't care how eloquently they speak and how popular they are. Again, as we talked about with Billy Graham, but I pray you'll listen to this warning and I pray you'll consider it. And like I said earlier, I pray for you to get into the word of God and study these matters of the end times and don't just memorize your chart that your teacher told you and go with that. Search the scriptures. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. You need to prove those doctrines in the Bible or they're worthless. If the word of God doesn't say it's so, then don't believe it. And all I'm telling you to do, make your own chart. Get into the New Testament and the Old Testament and see how these prophecies line up. Everything Jesus told them about, when they asked what was going to happen in the end, at, at the time of your second coming, in the end of the world, everything he answered them about is prophesied in the Old Testament as things that happen on the day of the Lord. At the end of this tribulation period, and all the terrible things that happened before that, is the devil persecuting God's children and persecuting Israel also, probably in hopes that they won't be able to come to God. But God is more powerful, and God wins. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it for today. I pray that you'll share this show. If you want to support Truth Dealer Radio, there's a way to do that at truthdealer-radio.com. If you have any questions, just write to me at brian at truthdealer-radio.com. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Truth Dealer Radio. No matter what time zone you're in, it's Truth O'Clock. Truthdealerradio.com. You keep talking about Jesus. Some folks out there just might be listening.